Hi guys, thank you for joining me. Yep, there was a magnitude 3.8 earthquake there near Bloomingdale, Indiana. It occurred at 2.18 p.m. local time and so far 3,268 people reportedly felt this earthquake. This earthquake occurred along or within the Wabash Valley seismic zone. Here you can see we got uh, Indianapolis over here, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, and the New Madrid seismic zone. Some geologists quick to jump on the wagon are reporting what they think they know about this area for earthquakes will say that uh, the reason that it was felt over such a large area is because it's old rocks compared to the west coast which is younger rock uh, this area they said has cold rocks that's why it was felt over a larger area which is hogwash um, here is a research paper it says in fact that the thickness of sediment which plays a large role in amplification were derived from a P wave refraction data with over 13,000 profiles and a preliminary geology based velocity model was constructed from available information on S wave velocities. So because of the thickness of the sediment which has filled in over the e eons in this area, shaking is going to be intensified in the Wabash and Ohio River areas. Because of that sediment, it will produce additional amplification in the southwest part of Indiana. Ground motion decreases as would be expected towards the bedrock units in south central Indiana, where motions are significantly lower than the values on the USGS map. Where you have the buildup of sediment, you're going to have also liquid faction, where the ground would turn to quicksand during a large earthquake. Here we have the location of that earthquake and here we have Indianapolis and then down here it's right on the edge of the Wabash fault zone, seismic zone. Here's the felt map. We got Sandusky, Ohio. We got Grand Rapids, Michigan that reportedly felt this earthquake. Yeah, this is all part of the Ohio River area of flooding and lots of sediment. Uh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, we got report, reports. Charleston, uh, West Virginia, the Ozarks, uh, Tennessee, Knoxville, let's see, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, yeah, got nothing to do with hot or cold rocks. And the healing of the fault zones got absolutely nothing to do with that. Yeah, when fault zones have healed up, they've stored up a lot of pressure. They don't heal. They're just waiting to be reactivated. And this is all part of the New Madrid seismic zone. It goes up around Lake Michigan. Um, it comes all the way down, 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 down. This fault zone ruptured a little more than 15 miles. Uh, we got here 24.53 kilometers of the rupture distance. Here we have the focal mechanism ball. Uh, tension, it shows majority of the tension was from the south. Of course we had tension in the north. First wave of the earthquake came from the east and we have spreading. The fault opened up. It slightly moved, oh, going northwest a little bit. This here is the seismic station at Wyandotte Cave, Indiana. There was something going on prior to this earthquake. This is the earthquake right there, that little divot. Let me pull this down a little bit more. Right there. That is that 3.8 earthquake as it came in at these caves. But if you notice this signature here, there was something going on five hours before this magnitude 3.8. Okay, this is Wyandotte caves indiana here we have the station from grayling michigan and we got the same signature but it's smaller i have not been able to figure out where this signature came in it's on the 1400 line uh 1400 and about oh 20 minutes maybe 
It doesn't show that 3.8 earthquake on here. Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we got that same signature. Now we know that large earthquakes around the world can trigger earthquakes in other parts of the world. And there's that same signature. Five hours before that 3.8 earthquake. I have not been able to find any significant event during this time frame that could have triggered this 3.8 earthquake. This was something that impacted the world. Here we got Kazakhstan. And I'm going to bring this down and there's that same signature. And here we have Kanza Prairie, Kansas. The same signature. So here we have the Schumann Residence. I thought I'd check out to see what kind of um, event was going on in space. And here you can see 1400 right there. Yeah, was this the cause of it? And I'll bring it down for you. 1400. And then we got 1800. Now the KP index, well yesterday it spiked all the way up to 5. We do know that um, the solar eclipse that happened on the 10th, there could be a 10 day window where it would affect things here on Earth, but nothing currently with the KP index. Um, I haven't been able to find uh, what's going on maybe with space weather that could have affected the Earth to cause that little blip at 1400 hours on so many monitors. This area is capable of having a magnitude 7.5 earthquake. And if you think about all the bridges and gas lines, the infrastructure and with all the sediment, yeah, it would be devastating. Intensity level 5 felt by nearly everyone. Many awake and some dishes, windows and so on broken. Cracked plaster in a few places. Unstable objects overturned. Disturbance of trees, utility poles, and other tall objects, sometimes noticeable. Ten pendulum clocks may stop working. And that was the intensity level that they gave this earthquake. The state of Indiana has a earthquake preparedness page. What you should do before, before a major earthquake. Create a waterproof disaster kit. The kit should support each person a minimum of seven days. Create a list of emergency phone numbers. Use text messaging. Don't call. Often uh, text messaging will work when um, actual phone calls don't. Designate a meeting place away from the home and any collaps collapsible structures. Earthquakes can occur at any time of the day, but for some reason they do happen more at night. Plan ahead for addressing an emergency during uh, work or a school day. Create and practice a household reunification plan, including designated contact information and a meeting location. And this is very important. Learn how to turn off water, gas, and electricity supplied to the home from the main shutoff valve or switch. Contact the local utility company on how to properly shut off the lines. Practice drop cover and hold on with every household member and co-worker. Place heavy objects on low shelves and light objects on top shelves. Have those bookcases bolted to the walls. Don't have the junk hanging on the wall by your bed. Secure heavy furniture such as bookcases, hanging TVs, kitchen appliances and air conditioners, furnaces and water heaters. Wall anchors are now commercially available and easy to install, and yes, they are because I've used them all. And if possible, have walls, chimneys, windows, and foundations reinforced. Uh, stronger structures better withstand the shock of an earthquake. Consider purchasing earthquake insurance policies for homes, retail properties, and businesses. And don't forget the pets. You need to have pet carriers. They're probably not going to let you into a shelter unless you have a, a pet carrier. Of course, during an earthquake, drop cover and hold on. I keep telling people, if you're in a, a multi-level building, get the heck off the bed. In Los Angeles, when they had um, a large earthquake, there was people who were crushed to death, suffocated, 
um, if they had been on the floor next to their bed, they would have had the bed frame, um, hopefully protect them a little bit. Put a pillow over your head and neck. If you're outside, stay away from power lines, tall buildings, falling rocks, and anything that could collapse. If in a vehicle, drive slowly to a location away from buildings. Get the heck off the overpass. Don't go under the overpass and utility wires. That other page said have seven days of food and water. Here it says three days. Uh, one per person needs at least three gallons of water. Three gallons of water for each person. Example of foods. Always get something that you're going to like. Protein bars canned meat, dry cereal, dry milk, peanut butter, real good source in protein. Uh, don't forget the baby formula and yeah, they got crackers. Latex gloves, scissors, tweezers, petroleum jelly, sterile dressing, um, adhesive bandages, thermometer, soap and hydrogen peroxide, antibiotic ointments, sunscreen, uh, prescription medication and supplies, over-the-counter pain reliever, anti-diarrhea medication, antacid, and laxatives. Laxatives, excuse me. And then they got the wrench, of course, to shut off your gas and water. Don't forget a can opener. I wouldn't believe how many people forget the can opener. A manual one, not powered. Um, eating utensils, paper cups, plates, things like that you don't need to wash. Uh, flashlight, extra batteries, no candles might have a, a gas leak and don't know it and could cause an explosion. Battery powered or hand crank radio. Local ma maps, dusk mask, plastic sheeting, duct tape. And nowadays, uh, I guess if you get Gorilla Tape is better, but the old-fashioned duct tape is just garbage nowadays. Garbage bags, fire extinguisher, matches in a waterproof case, blankets, important documents, don't forget the shoes. I always keep an extra pair of shoes next to my bed. You know, things like uh, social security cards, deeds, bonds, cash. Yeah, what if the ATM isn't working? How are you going to um, pay for goods at a store unless you got cash? Clothing, strong shoes, long sleeve shirt, jeans, extra socks. Entertainment for kids if applicable. And extra baby supplies. I keep baby wipes. Because they work great when you don't have water uh, to cleaning yourself or whatever. Cleaning wounds, things like that. You know, they do have bug out kits now for pets. Only about 1% of the population is actually prepared for a disaster. I know you guys that watch me and are subscribed. Yeah, you're part of that 1%. But I really wish and I keep emphasizing... You know, even if we got it up to 10% that had survival um, supplies, things like that. You could be a help instead of a hindrance. You could be a help instead of going out and looking for someone to help you. Yeah, mommy government is not going to come to your rescue. No, not right away. They're going to be swamped. Uh, phone lines will be down. Fire stations might not still be standing. Hospitals could be um damage evacuating themselves you need to learn how to take care of yourself in the event of an emergency this magnitude 3.8 could be a wake-up call for many of you you could be one of those that is helping the others instead of you looking for someone to help you yeah be one of the one percenters so if you have any, any, any other thoughts or comments, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you.